So, you wanna get started in multifamily, huh? But don't know how, huh? Then guess what? You found the right video, huh? <laughs> hey Daniel, cue in the intro, please. Hey, how's it going, friend? Juan Pablo here. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We're glad to have you because on this channel, we like to focus on the three pillars to financial freedom, which are personal finance, credit, and all that good stuff, funding, having a repeatable source of investment capital, and last and certainly not least, multi units and multifamily. So that way you can get that passive income baby. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe so that way the algorithm can do its thing to get you additional videos to help you along your journey towards financial freedom. So without further ado, let's dive into the topic. So you might be in a situation in which you want to get into multifamily, but you don't want to leverage your credit. Either you're just against uh, using debt, you know, that could be a reason why you don't want to use leverage your, your, your personal credit. Or B, you, you might not be able to leverage your personal credit because you might have some negative things on your credit, okay? So I, I completely understand, but I have to say, if you're the latter, meaning you have some negative things on your credit, you definitely gotta tackle that. Because I wanna share these, these strategies with you and just thinking, okay, well, I'll just use these strategies, use these, utilize these strategies, but do nothing about my credit. Nope, so you still gotta clean up your credit. All right, and I got a video below that talks about credit repair, so just make sure you check that in the description, okay? Watch the video. All right, so let's dive into the topic. So let's say, you know, you still wanna get started with um, multifamily. Let's say you are repairing your credit. Let's say you just don't wanna use debt. Cool, no problem. I'm gonna list a few strategies that you can leverage to help you get multifamily. So multifamily, we're talking about buy and hold strategy, meaning you're buying a property and you're holding on to it for the cash flow. Now with that strategy, especially with multifamily, I'm gonna be talking about five units and up. That's what multifamily is, okay? Especially for commercial mortgages purposes because they're a tad bit more, more lenient. Now, there's two ways to go about it. Well, I did this, that's four. <laughs> two ways to go about, there's two ways about, there's two ways to, to go in about it. Whatever, you get what I'm trying to say. What you wanna do first and foremost is consider option A or option B. Option A can be a master lease option. Option B can be a limited partnership. So let me explain. Let's let's talk about the uh, master lease option first. And this is how I, uh, this is how I found the, the master lease option myself. I was buying two properties concurrently. I had uh, I think a nine unit and eleven unit under contract, and I, I was investing in these two properties, and so my cash was pretty slim. Okay. Now, being that my cash was slim, my real estate agent gave me another deal that I might like. It was a 13 unit. And I was looking at the numbers and say, you know what, I really want to do this deal. However, I just don't have the capital to, to go towards the down payment. So me and being that I had a great rapport with my real estate agent, I asked the agent, hey, what's the motivation of the seller? That's important. Why is the seller selling? And he said, well, he's a uh, he's an attorney and uh, he mismanaged the property. He hired a property manager who wasn't doing a good job, yada, yada, yada. And so he's trying to get this property off his, off his hands. How long has he listed it for? It's been some time, but he just, he just wanted to get, get rid of it. So that was a, a huge, uh, that was some great information for me because I realized, whoa, this dude is motivated. That's the first requirement, motivation to sell it. So I started to think, well, if this guy's motivated, then he might be willing to negotiate. So I said, hey, um, agent, see if the, the seller would be willing to do a max lease option. And by the way, agent, you'll still get paid. I get it's not a closing, because it's a lease option, meaning I'll be the master tenant. So I have a, a, a lease over to all 13 units with the right to sublet it. But I'm typically not the, the owner. I'm pretty much, uh, like John D. Rockefeller said, control is better than ownership. I'm controlling the 13 units, but I don't own it. The owner still owns it. So the owner, owner still gets the benefits of the tax write-offs and so forth, but I get the benefits of the cash flow because I'm controlling it to improve the performance. So I shared this with the agent, told him he'll still get his commission, even we don't, t t even though I'm not technically buying it, I still pay you since you gave this deal to me. Long story short, seller agreed to it. So I had two documents prepared, the match lease and the option, the match lease was basically saying that I have control over the 13 units 
and the option is basically I have the right to exercise my option to buy it at a future date. And so I, I took control of the property, I increased the, the rents, I filled up the vacant units, I did some repairs to the point that it was cash flowing nicely. Okay, so that's the first thing, match lease option. So even though I said I entertained a match lease option because I was low on cash, but you can also exercise the match lease option if you're low on credit. Why? There's no banks involved. It's just a negotiation between the seller and I with the agent being the intermediary, you know, just being the liaison between the two. That's it. So I didn't have to reach out to my mortgage lender for that mortgage lender to, to run my credit. I, I didn't have to use any other forms of financing because it's just a lease option. It's like you, you're negotiating with a landlord if you were a tenant about the rent, you know, what you're gonna pay and so forth. So sure, you might pay a little bit upfront and that's about it. So you might have to pay something called an option, which is similar to a down payment. And if you exercise your option, that money will go towards the down payment. So you can do that, but it's negotiable, right? You don't have to put a 10%, 20% down payment. You can negotiate whatever you want. So that's the first thing, a master's option. Now the second thing I mentioned was a lease option, uh, not a lease option, a limited partnership. So let me share with you how I discovered limited partnership. So after I quit my uh, nine to five, you know, feeling great, amazing, I place a ton of expenses and write-offs on my tax return to reduce my tax liability. I didn't want to pay Uncle Sam a dime. <laughs> so I pretty much just wrote a lot of things off. But then I realized that it hindered me from getting qualified for a mortgage because at this point I had a three unit under contract. So I reached out to my mortgage lender and said, hey, I, hey Linda, I got this three unit. Uh, let's go ahead and push this deal through. Let me know if you need an updated personal financial statement, whatever documents you need to do this mortgage. And she said, hey Juan, thanks, but I can't, I, you know, after seeing your docs, I, I, I can't give you a mortgage. Why? Well, your tax returns, Juan, it shows that you had losses. Well, you know, it's just on paper. So I, I you know, I have to pay taxes. Yeah, Juan, I get it. I understand. However, we can't give you a mortgage because it looks like your business is unprofitable. And that was a huge blow. So I thought, so, so what does this mean? I can't invest anymore? It's just like telling a basketball player he can't shoot anymore, right? So you tell me as a real estate investor, I can't invest anymore? And she said, you know what? Not, not necessarily. I said, hey, Linda, give me the scoop. What do I need to do? So just share it with me. She said, as long as you can get partners that bring the things you like to the table. So in that case, I had bad tax returns. I had. I didn't have the documentation. But in your case, you might not have the credit. So if you like the credit, then cool. Find a partner who can bring the credit to the table. You can do the same thing for cash. If you happen to you know, realize you don't have the, the investment capital together, find an investor who can, a limited partner in other words, who can bring the capital to the table as well. So that way you can have many limited partners bring the cash, the paper, the documents to the table, the positive tax returns, as well as the credit. As long as you, Make sure you have a, a small percentage in the equity. So that way you fly under the radar and the mortgage lender won't ask you for your financials. So she gave me some golden advice. So once I learned that, I started doing partnerships. Now, unfortunately for two years, because I had losses on my tax returns for one year, I had to show two years of positive tax returns in order to qualify for a mortgage, personally speaking. So I said, okay, even though I have to wait to do a deal by myself for two years, I can do deals with partners. And that's what I did. So I ended up buying several properties doing that and, and using creative financing. And I have a, a video below too about a creative financing source for you to check out. And that's what I did. So if you're in that same situation in which you're, you might be lacking in credit, or let's say documentation, you might not have the tax returns, you might not have the W2 1099s, you might not have the income to prove that you're, you're profitable, or you might not even have the, uh, the cash, the credit, or, or whatever. There might be other things holding you back. That's perfectly fine. You just gotta be creative. Do a master lease option or do a limited partnership for a multi-family property. And trust me, you will be on your way to getting that cash flow, baby. All right, guys, so that's it. Hopefully you found value. I actually got a free training for you. I definitely want you to check it out. Just click the link below. It shows you how to leverage your, your portfolio, get, get some passive income, 
multifamily baby so you can say goodbye to the nine to five. As always, guys, this is to your success. Continue to earn passively, live passionately. Peace.